I'm Atuba Jordan. I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, which, which listen, there's a lot, there's a lot in my heart to share with you today. Praise God. Can we call for our daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith in agreement with me right now. You will see a miracle. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You see, what we're doing in calling for that daily bread is actually the part of this eternal life we're talking about. It is Jesus that said we should ask. Now we are asking because of Jesus. So we are understanding the Father through Jesus. He's given us this liberty. You can ask the Father anything in my name. Praise God. Okay. So since Jesus said we should ask the Father anything in his name, then Lord, I'm asking. See that? Now, that knowledge came by Jesus Christ. That's eternal. That's why a miracle is going to happen today in your life. Praise God. Whatever it is, maybe it's healing in your body. Don't be afraid to ask him. Say, Lord, healing belongs to me in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now, I was sharing something with you yesterday from the book of Romans chapter 1. I want us to begin from there and explore into the things that the Lord have laid in our hearts. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Now Paul was speaking here and he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I was explaining to you what this meant. He said, I'm not ashamed of the preaching of Christ. Now, what's he saying? He's not saying, I'm not ashamed of the preaching that preaches about Christ. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel that Christ preaches. I'm not ashamed of the gospel that Christ preaches. That's what John, um, Paul was talking about here. So do you hear the gospel from him? Do you hear him? If you are not hearing him, first and foremost, you don't even know the gospel of Christ. Listen, I'll say this again. He didn't say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel that talks about Christ. No, he's saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel that Christ preaches, the gospel of Christ. What Christ is preaching. The good news Christ is saying. So he was not referring to, referring, he wasn't talking here about listening to one preacher preach, one message. No, he's referring to what Christ is. Now, Christ is the Holy Spirit today. When we say Christ, we're simply talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus became the Christ because of the Holy Spirit. You understand that? So till this day, we have Christ in us. That's what the Holy Spirit in us. You see that? So when he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Christ is preaching a gospel in you. Are you hearing him? Now look at what he says. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Believes what? The gospel that Christ is preaching. So Christ is preaching to you. Oh, I've not been to church in the past three months. Hey, you don't need to go to church to hear Christ preach to you. He's preaching to you on your bed. He's preaching to you when you wake up. He's preaching to you when you're going out. He's preaching to you when you're driving. He's always preaching to you. Now that's even the gospel that makes you part of the church. If you are not hearing Christ preach to you, I'm sorry to tell you, even though you are the first person that go to the physical church building every other day, you are not part of the church. Those that belong to the church hear the gospel of Christ. 
that this is what makes us different. Some are here in Christ, some only hear the preacher. Now, it's now bad for you if the preacher is not preaching the gospel of Christ. You understand? So if the preacher is not hearing Christ and saying to you what he's hearing from Christ, then you're in trouble. You're not hearing Christ yourself. Then you're in the place where the preacher is not hearing Christ. So you're lost. But Christ is preaching a gospel. And Paul is saying the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Let me paraphrase this for you. The gospel of Christ is the power of God that changes you. So if God wants to change you, the power by, me, which, by, by, by which he changes you is the saying, the teachings of Christ in you. So maybe you're sick in your body and you're just lying down there and wondering, oh, well, how, how am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm feeling so weak. I'm feeling so weak. Now, God wants to release his power into your body to bring you healing. How is he going to do it? He is going to send his word. David said in the book of Psalms, he sent his word and healed them. See that? So Christ, God is going to get it through Christ. I am not my kind of bossy. Hold on here. Let me show you something. Romans, 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 Romans. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. We're talking about the manifestation of eternal life. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now what's it saying? If the spirit of God, who's the one that raised Jesus from the dead? God, right? So if the spirit of him that raised Jesus, if the spirit of God dwell in you. Mm -hmm. I want you to follow this closely. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Okay. It is the spirit of God that dwells in you. It is God who quickens your mortal body. And how does he do it? He does it by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, how? Through the gospel. Are you getting this now? So, if God wants to bring his manifestation into your life, this is all he does. He preaches the gospel to you. How does he preach the gospel to you? To Christ in you. So you begin to hear Christ tell you, you can do that business again and it's going to work this time. Oh, I've tried it several times. It didn't work. I don't know. No, 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 no. Now Christ begins to talk to you. Christ begins to talk to you. This is why it failed. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Now do it now and you see it to succeed. Okay. Now, it is no power if you don't believe it. You may be lying on that bed. Oh, I'm so weak. I'm so weak. Then you begin to hear Christ speak to you. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Why am I just hearing by his stripes? That's Christ preaching to you. And you're on that bed so weak and wondering, am I going to die on this bed? Oh, wh what's going to happen? Oh, the doctor said there's no more hope. What is Christ saying? Have you listened to the gospel of Christ? Have you listened? Then suddenly you begin to hear. You can get up and walk. You can get up and be healed. You can get up. You can do what you couldn't do before. You're like, no, I can't get up. I'm so weak. Do you know? Ah, no, no. I can't even think of standing up. Man, no, 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 no. Now, what is going on? You don't believe Christ. Christ is preaching to you and you don't believe him. And if you don't believe him, you won't see the power of God walk in you. He says, it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto life change. 
unto a life that change, unto a life that will change. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the power of God to change your life. What's the power of God? The gospel that Christ is preaching in you. To everyone who believes, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. Remember what I told you on Monday? Was it Monday you know, or, Tuesday, or yesterday? About the, the, the Jews and, and, and the gospel and salvation being of the Jews. Now watch this now. Verse 17 says, For daring, where? The gospel that Christ is preaching. Inside, if you listen to that gospel, if you look at that gospel Christ is preaching to you in your heart, if you look at it, what? The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith now where was it written it was written in habakkuk what did habakkuk say the just shall live maybe we should go to habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. habakkuk thank you lord jesus brother habakkuk praise god oh blessed lord jesus Habakkuk chapter 2. Verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Now, how did Paul relate with this scripture over here? For now, he says, For therein the righteousness of God is revealed. Where? In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, what's going on here? As Christ is preaching in you, and you believe him, he begins to tell you the righteousness of God. So when you begin to hear by his stripes, you were healed. Huh? Yeah. I was healed. I was healed. Then he tells you, if you were healed, then you are healed now. Now, what's going on? The righteousness of God is being revealed. So now you begin to say, oh, this sickness is not about God. I used to think God hated me. I used to think God is teaching me a lesson. I used to think God is punishing me because of the assignment I didn't do. But now, uh, Christ is preaching something else. You are healed. I was healed. If I was healed and it was his mind to get me healed in Christ Jesus, then why would he be putting sickness on me? That's counter um, working against himself. And, and a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. Oh, so it's not God that put this sickness on me. No. So it's not God that's trying to punish me. No. Now what's going on? The righteousness of God is revealed as the gospel is coming to you. Are you seeing this now? Now you begin to hear those words inside you. It doesn't matter where. Now this is the beautiful thing. It doesn't matter where you are. You don't need money for this one. Praise God. You don't need to give anybody any money. You don't need to pay any transport fare. Right there where you are, Christ begins to preach to you. And suddenly, now you begin to see that ah, the thing, the spell, the, the bondage that was holding you all this while is going away. Is breaking off. It's breaking off. You begin, to, you know, you, you, energy begins to come inside you. Why? Because you're believing what Christ is saying to you. Hallelujah. Yes, you're believing what Christ is saying to you. And you're believing his words. You're like, ah, so why am I sick then? Why am I in this condition then? Why am I broke then? Why? Why? Uh huh. Now, what's going on? You are beginning to see the righteousness of God. And it's being revealed from faith to faith. Now, what does it mean from faith to faith? What it was, what you heard two years ago, what you heard two months ago. You see, he will come and improve on that now. 
Praise God. He will improve on that now. Like, oh, wow, wow. I used to think this is this was all, but now there is more. Praise God. There is more. Holy Ghost. There is more. Hey, what's going on? Then what did he say? The just. Now you are the just, right? You are the just. He said, You shall live by your own faith. Now, what is faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Now, so when you're hearing the voice of Christ, faith is coming to you. So as faith is coming to you, you're going from faith to faith, from faith to faith, from hearing to hearing, from hearing to hearing. Now, that's how we are being called to live. For man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So the just shall live by faith. Also mean the just shall live by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. But brothers and sisters, we don't look up to heaven for those words coming out of God's mouth. Where do we look for those words? In Christ. In Christ. Now where is Christ? Christ is in me. Glory to God. So I look for words every moment. I shut my eyes and I'm listening to what Christ will have to say to me. It doesn't matter how you have been written off or who has written you off. It doesn't matter who have told you that nothing good will come out of you. That's men. Praise God. Those are words of men. That's not what Christ is saying. What gospel is Christ preaching to you today? Can you be silent and listen to Christ? Can you just calm down and listen to him? Say, Christ Jesus. You know, he is in you. Say, preach to me. Preach to me. I told you, he said, I am coming, he comprehend. Holy Kumarahakaya. John chapter 15 and verse 3. He said, Ye are clean. Ye are pruned. The amplified version. Look for the amplified version and read it. You are pruned to the words that I have spoken unto you. The teachings that I discuss with you. The teachings that I discuss with you. The teachings that I discuss. What's the teaching? The preaching. The gospel. Praise God. Everything Christ says is the gospel. Praise God. He's, he preaches the gospel. And Paul says, I'm not ashamed. I told you yesterday, why are you ashamed? You are not bold to say what Christ is saying to you. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is the manifestation of eternal life. It is when we begin to say what Christ is saying to us. And Christ, the Christ is not going to say anything different from what the heart of the Father is for you. Now, you're not going to hear Christ tell you, you know, you're suffering because of that sin that you committed. Christ doesn't talk that way. I'm telling you the truth. Christ doesn't talk that way. Christ tells you your sins. Though many have been forgiven you. You remember that I come in. You know, I told you, Jesus came to manifest the heart, the personality of the Father. So you see this man, this, this man and his friends, the man was sick, sick of the um, impotent. I think he was impotent or sick of the palsy. And, and his friends took him. They wanted Jesus to heal him. But they got there, they couldn't enter. So what did they do? They went, climbed up the roof, tore the roof open and, and lowered their friend with ropes down. And then they just lowered him right in front of Jesus. And the first thing Jesus said to him was this, your sins have been forgiven you. Now I can imagine that the guy was thinking, oh dear, this man, I, I've torn his roof. I'm in trouble. And so he had all those condemning thoughts in his mind, like, how do I start apologizing to this man? That I, I'm sorry, I had to tear your roof. And so now in that state of mind, now this is what Christ does. In that state of mind, he is not going to think of receiving his healing. So the first thing Jesus did to him, looking at him, was to say, your sins are forgiven you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're free. <laughs> Praise God. And then he says, then he healed him. That's what Christ does. Christ doesn't tell you. Hmm. The reason you're not healed. Someone said, oh, I was praying and I heard the Lord say to me that he cannot heal me because I, I, I did this and I did that. 
that's not Christ. No, 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 no. I, I give you the permission to say Satan, I bind you when you hear such things. That's not Christ. That's not Christ. Now Christ will correct you. You see, if you're walking on the wrong, wrong path, Christ will tell you, hey, that's the wrong path. Walk in this path. Christ will do that. But Christ will never tell you, I cannot heal you because nah, nah, nah. Christ will instruct you. That is the message he preaches to us. That is the gospel of Christ. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you just stretch your hands this way? Holy Spirit, you know, without you, we can do nothing. Let your voice become so loud in their hearts as you preach the gospel to them. That they will believe and in believing they will be changed. They will be transformed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I want to hear from you if this message has been a blessing to you. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Help us spread this message also. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.